Hi, Grace Lord Church. I'm glad to see you again. And this is Pastor Lee. And I want to lead this Sunday's Bible verse and share the gospel word, okay? Uh, this is the um, book of Luke, chapter 23rd, verse 45 to 49. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. But the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had, what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breast and went away. But all those who knew him, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Amen. In today's scripture, Jesus was crucified and died. The Son of God was killed by man. Why did God allow this to happen to His Son? And what is the meaning of His death? There are many views about His death. Some say it is just the death of a good man. Some say it is a political death done by the authorities of Israel. While others say it is the death of a good teacher who gives us give us a good ethical lesson. So my brother, what do you think about what do you think of Jesus' death? So I'm trying to find the meaning of Jesus' death. First, the day Jesus died was the day that Jesus was sacrificed as the perfect sin offering for whole, for the whole world. A sin offering is an offering made as an atonement for sin. In a sin offering, the live animal was brought to the altar and the sinner was required to lay his hand on the head of the animal. By doing so, the sinner's sin transferred to the animal. Then the animal was killed. The sin offering was a vivid picture of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for the sins of the world. He was a lamb without blemish whose precious blood was spilled after being publicly slain. For those who don't believe in Jesus, the crucifixion was just a cruel punishment. But as for us, it was the day that Jesus sacrificed his body as a sin offering. My brother, isn't it a surprising, amazing, and unbelievable story? If we commit sin, we should be punished, right? But God, who loved us, gave His Son to us as a sin offering. There is no one or no God who is willing to do so. But Jesus, who loves you, gave Himself for you. So my brother, do you accept His love? Or are you still doubtful about what He has done for you? The second meaning of Jesus' death. Second, because of his death, we can go to God directly. Let us read verse 45 where it says, For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. It says, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. What does it mean? And what is the curtain of the temple? In the temple, there was the holy place where priests worked, and it was divided in two, the holy place and the most holy place. The most holy place is the earthly dwelling place of God's presence from the rest of the temple where man dwelt. This signified that man was separated from God by sin. 
only high priest was permitted to pass beyond this curtain once each year to enter into God's presence for all of Israel and make atonement for their sin. An early Jewish tradition says that the curtain was about four inches thick. What significance does this torn curtain have for us today? Above all, the tearing of the curtain at the moment of Jesus' death dramatically symbolized that his sacrifice, the shedding of his own blood, was a sufficient atonement for sin. It signifies that now the way into the most holy place was open for all people, for all time, both the Jew and the Gentile. My brother, we were not able to go to God because we are sinners. But Jesus' death caused the curtain to tear. So we are able to access God directly. Hebrews 10, 19, 20 says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is his body. It is great and marvelous news. We are able to go God directly. There is no God who opened the way to them freely. They have a man medium to communicate with the people. But God wanted to come directly without no one's help but Jesus. You don't need any help nor man to meet God. Therefore, my brothers, why don't you use and enjoy this privilege to meet God? Just pray and say to God whatever you want to talk to Him. Your God, your Father in heaven will listen to you and answer. Third, the death of Jesus opened the age of grace. Before Jesus, people were in the age of Moses' law. According to the law, we are supposed to die because the law accused the people to die as the wage of sin is death. However, after Jesus died on the cross, our sin were washed away and we were justified. We are no longer under the under the, of the law. God's grace which forgive our sin make us pure and righteous. So the law cannot do anything to us as we are living under God's grace. We are not the slave of sin but the children of God. My brothers and sisters, Jesus' death has brought us three things. First, a sin offering for us. Second, direct access to God. And third, the age of grace. Do not consider Jesus' death to be something for others, but yours. Jesus died for you to give you salvation. Just open your heart and receive what he has done for you. Believe in Jesus who brought you new life with His blood. Let His blood and power work within your life as the most powerful vaccine to crush the virus of sin. I hope and pray that each one of you receive Jesus as your personal Savior, accepting what He has done for you on the cross during His life. Amen.